All right, cool. Well, welcome. We've started the show. This is Min Collins and Madison Willow. This is my 92nd episode of Brett's with Friends. Welcome to the show. Nice to meet you, Madison. Nice, nice to, to meet Min. you. <laughs> nice um, to meet you, or nice to see you, actually. I've yeah. met you before. Uh, well, <laughs> hey, this will be hey, um... Madison. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys came on the show. Uh, basically, I this is unscripted podcast, so uh, we're making it up as we go along. But I just get basically some familiarization with um, men to the audience, and then to you, Madison, about your how you met. But also, I guess men start about where you're kind of coming from right now. You're a writer, director, producer, extraordinaire, um, <laughs> Madison. You are a Instagram uh, star. Am I a TikTok? Uh, what's going on here? Yeah, but after some influencer. Okay. Okay. Begin men. And then we'll go to you, Madison. Pick up where he leaves off. Okay. Well, uh, um, film, film director, uh, producer, of course, writer. And uh, yeah, I've been working in the industry for a while, um, over 15 years, I think. I have several feature films in, uh, you know, uh, in my pocket and working on a new project with Madison. And uh, the project is called Fables for the Witching Hour. So we're excited about this one. I think it's going to be a fun, it's an anthology. Uh, anthology, of course, are very hard to do. And um, there's always uh, you know, people that don't know what anthologies are. It's basically four to five different short films uh, in the same genre. We're doing a horror yep. genre. And then uh, we have the wraparound um, show that ties it all together. And that's the one that I directed with Madison and also Lauren um, Kakowski. Nice. And how did you, now you had a certain scenario when, we're going to get to you in Madison one second, because, but there's oh, a- Take your time. I know. Take I just, your time. I'm, also, I'm also like, because men's done a lot of different things in a lot of different areas of, you know, making movies and stuff like that. How did you sculpt and find Madison? What was the arc of that? Because you had a template of, of a, an idea, this anthology. And then, so what happened- when you met Madison, how did that all happen? Why did you want to do that? Well, uh, the idea was to cast for the wraparound segment. Oops, sorry. Let me uh, put this on silent. Of course, there's a, I'm, <laughs> I'm in an office, so lots of, uh, you know, uh, working people walking around and stuff, but uh, hopefully it doesn't interfere with the sound too badly. Anyways, uh, yeah, so what we did was we went out and cast for this project and, uh, you know, for the lead and uh, you know, we, we we actually got a lot of submissions. It was around 600 or over 600 submissions. And we narrowed it down to the, you know, the person I really liked and Madison was one of them. And we had uh, Madison do the, the reading for it. And uh, I really liked her. So we had a personal meeting. I had a handful of people that I met with and decided to go with Madison. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you made the cut, Madison. That's a, you got to feel pretty good to make it through all those people. I think I think she's I the made next, the cut. Yeah, I think I think she's the next uh, scream queen. Perfect. Thank you, thank you, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, Madison, tell us. Uh, okay, he gave us his backstory. What's your backstory that led up to the moment that you met men? Where did how did you get into the entertainment industry? Tell us about because the genre that you work in is a little bit, you know, obviously more of a millennial. Uh, sort of situation with the various outlets of creating content. Can you give us a little bit about how you started and what brought you into 2023 with Min Collins and me on this fucking podcast? Yeah, definitely. So I've been acting for over five years. I'm from New York, but I moved to LA after I graduated high school to pursue acting. And ever since then, I've just been submitting to a lot of roles, working on a lot of projects, and I applied to Men's Project, Fables for the Witching Hour, and I did the audition for it. And it's been really awesome. We had a great time filming, and I can't wait to see the movie. How long did you guys film for? Um, so we filmed for about, well, there's five short films within the movie. So those were all filmed, probably took a longer time, but Men and I personally filmed just for one day. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And you got all the coverage on that, man? You feel pretty happy about that? Well, I mean, the our part, our segment is not complete because the idea is that we're going to do uh, volume one, volume two, and volume three. So um, with that being said, our segment are, is, gonna, is going to be in between. So what happens is that, you know, we start our segment and then we cut and then we go to the, uh, the first uh, show the first short film, and then mm -hmm. we come back and then we continue our story and then we cut and then we go to another one. 
And then, so by the time the whole series is over, our show is just starting to develop. So no. that what happens is that after this movie, <laughs> it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. And then we start the second volume of the anthology, and then we continue our story from there. So our story is going to continue throughout three anthologies. It's sort of like the the through line of the it's the exactly. the, the thread that connects everything together. Exactly, and then the audience and the fan base are going to want to follow what Madison's doing uh, with you know with our story because all the other stories have a beginning and an ending in each of the of the stories except ours will not have an ending until yeah. <laughs> the very until the third and that's the idea is that to continue the storyline and then of course we're going to uh probably make another movie uh continue that storyline after the, uh, the three anthology to a full feature film so it's like building bricks to make a house uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're putting, house. House. Yeah. <laughs> we're putting in we're putting in pieces. Let's let's put it that way. Nice. So like um Madison, can you for people like myself that didn't grow up in the genre that you're basically building on, mm -hmm. can you tell us how that whole thing works with like getting like what was your story with that? Becoming an influencer and an entertainer and the sort of grassroots level that you've done it at. Like what was that? Were you, do you, did you have, when did this spark? Yeah, that's a great question. I think influencing really sparked when I moved to LA and I started doing auditions and sometimes auditions will have this thing where you fill out information about yourself and they would ask about followers. And I was like, that's crazy. I thought you just had to be good at acting. Now in the 2020s, they really care about followers sometimes or they want to see your face out there. Also, I think that social media is a great opportunity. If you're not getting booked for roles, you can still create. You can still make a project. You can still get your face out there. So that's kind of what started my influencing journey, acting and also just wanting to put my face out there, even if I do or don't book roles. Nice. So you're just basically creating content regardless. That's me and yeah. talking about this. We're going to do what we do no matter what. Right, right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> so how's the state of affairs with that? Like the industry, I guess the industry or the the algorithms, like how is it all working? How do you see it going from when you started to like now it's like fucking on steroids? <laughs> yeah, I think when I started social media, it was definitely a different game. I think over the past even just two years, it's grown so much. So many people are making very, very product, very high production shows. And it's crazy to see how most people start off with like Vine or like short film little videos of their phone and now people have full production so that's been really interesting to see how that's changed what are some of the programs that are people that you watch yeah that's a good question um i watch a lot of i watch a lot of podcasts as well i'm actually i have my own podcast that i'm a producer on um it's not my own but my client has a podcast um zach campbell so i help produce that i'm on camera for that one so that's something i definitely watch um i watch a lot of my friends i really like to support my friends um, I watch a lot of like advice, or I watch psychology, or I watch a lot of different things. So, <laughs> so do you see about, like we're? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I was gonna say adding to uh, today's programming or today's uh, content. You know, of course, it's everything is a lot quicker, right? Where the yeah. attention span mm -hmm. is so much uh, shorter. So creating shorter content is, is probably the best right now, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why the anthology is good because it's you know basically short films. Uh, it captures someone's attention. Let's say, you know, they have something else they have to do. Uh, they can shut off that after that first show, run off, do whatever they need to, and then come back. So it's a, I think the anthology these days um, is, a, is a good programming for the attention span. Yeah, I agree. What? I didn't catch any of that. My attention spans way, way. I, <laughs> um, I lost you about a minute in there. Uh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> that's why we're doing the anthology. So people so, like you can can actually follow it. <laughs> follow it for like clips. People like um, like this is like such a. Do you see the platforms changing at all? Like like with the different medias and stuff like that. Like like how we had Friendster before your time, Madison, uh, and then we had MySpace or MySpace and the Friendster, and then you know Facebook came and destroyed those guys. And mm -hmm. with Instagram and uh, was a uh, Mastodon coming up? I don't know if you guys have heard of Mastodon. I heard it's that like one. a new Facebook that they're trying to get off the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but it's so hard to leave these platforms once it's been so created and integrated. Like, like have you guys gotten there? Like, how long have you been on Facebook, uh, Men and Madison? 
Hmm. I think I made a Facebook in sixth grade. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so, long time. <laughs> that was what, uh, sixth grade was what, uh, two years ago? Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, there so. you go. <laughs> well, how really? What, give us a breakdown. How, um, how, how I, long ago was that? Was that 10 years yeah, ago? Yeah, I probably would say at least a decade ago. Probably over a decade. Something I've noticed with social media apps changing, I think a good example is Instagram and TikTok. How Instagram used to just be all photos and TikTok used to be all videos. And now Instagram's trying to talk. Instagram is trying to copy TikTok by making reels and TikTok's trying to copy Instagram by having slide photos. So it's interesting to see those change and copy each other. Do you have any predict? Okay, I like to do the glass ball here. Let's make some predictions, like even a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, God forbid 2030, which is seven years from now. Oh my gosh. Logan, if you guys want to do the timeline on that, seven years from now, look at what seven years was seven years ago. It was 2016. Yeah, that's really crazy when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so with uh, that being said, like the, the amount of technology that's happened in the last seven, now what do you think, can we lay, lay a little rainbow bridge into the future and see, because you guys are pretty, in a, a, like men's been working in the system, the Hollywood system, creating his own films for like a long time. You've been creating your content. How do you guys have any, like, I don't know, let's talk about it. Let's let's talk about where this, we like the anthology pop, uh, thing is what and you know you really like in these days men, uh, men. and um how do you see the like how is do you have it it doesn't spitball it like what do you see coming up in the next year two years three years whatever well i think uh, there's a big change of course now with uh, you know vertical format right um for phones you know before no one did vertical formats and now you know people are i've talked to some producers and stuff and uh, people are thinking about doing full features on vertical format mm -hmm. which is completely crazy but you yeah know, hey. <laughs> it's so <laughs> well, strange but yeah cool. and who knows maybe maybe in uh, four or five years or you know seven years from now all the uh, formats is going to be vertical because it's all moving towards, uh, you know, social media, phones, much easier accessibility. Yeah, so who knows? I mean, I'm just predicting definitely there's going to be more vertical format, um, you know, uh, movies and things that will be coming out. Um, I think I was talking to someone, a director, like, I don't know, a couple of years ago. Actually, yeah, it was a year ago when I was in Bulgaria. And um, he said that he edited this vertical format project that was from Israel. And it was like, I mean, a huge hit there. Uh, I mean, everybody, millions and millions of people were watching the show. And apparently, you know, um, it, everyone was gravitating towards how good it is. So I'm just saying, you know, I, I don't discount anything. How is that being presented? On phones. On, on phone, you know, okay. They didn't yeah. just project it vertically. No, 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 no. It's it's basically feature film or a whole project on just a so phone. People so people can actually watch it. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, continue. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I, I'm just saying that you know, social media has changed a lot of uh, ways people watch and view. Uh, I mean, when I first got on Facebook, I'm trying to think of what year I think it was like 20, oh, shoot, maybe 2011, uh, when my first movie was released. And the only reason I got on there was you know, basically to advertise my movies and projects. And then since then, of course, you know, now we have Instagram, you know, Twitter came into play. And then, of course, TikTok. So who knows in seven years, you know, to answer your question, Brett, um, who knows? Like, Maybe we won't, you know, <laughs> who knows what other platform is going to pop out? Yeah. How about you, Madison? What do you think about that? Yeah, I could definitely see more virtual reality, especially with the metaverse, which is what Facebook is working on, and maybe like more immersive experiences with content. Like even when you go to arcades now, they have a lot of like, if you guys have seen the VR headsets, and I could just see more content being made within that world as well. Yeah, and how does that take shape, you know, because... Yeah, I think yeah. the VR the VR world is a little difficult, I think. Um, I've been looking into that as well. And it's hard to actually, I mean, you know, do a full movie with VR, right? Because I bet mm -hmm. you know, because you know, you're 360, and uh, the audience That's only true. one direction at a time. So, how yeah. do you, you know, <laughs> try to present someone coming from behind, or you know, you need to have that POV, right? So yeah. sound, sound is a big part, but then also don't forget, you know, when you're wearing that uh, headgear, 
it gets very heavy and uh, people get, uh, you know, vertigo when you're, when you're in that yeah. space. So you can't have that on for like an hour and a half for a feature film, but you can yeah. have it on for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, you know, and that's still very long uh, span of time. No, they make, they make them with little, um, they make them with little fans in them and audio and audio too. Like, so they got fans going through these things too. Right. Um, right. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because, like, will we be reliant on these films if you if all this technology is being built towards this, which we're looking at all the time, like that thing is going to have to change as well. Like, I mean, do you remember when the Google Glass was happening? I mean, are you filming me? Or maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I am. Oh you yeah. Know, and mm -hmm. people didn't like that shit. But right. I think they're gonna. There's gonna have to be a squeeze mode where it all like, you know how we all sign on to Facebook and didn't bother to read what it said and all that shit when we first tapped onto it. We're all, we're all game for it. We're like, I guess, I guess they own my shit, you know, and signed off on your image or whatever, or data or whatever. And I think there's going to be, that was a pretty easy, everyone fell, fell in line with that pretty quick. And that continued and continued and now where we're at. So it just seems like the, um, I think the technology, I don't know, people want, the, don't you want your hands back again? I, I feel like we gotta get our hands back somehow. No? Think, what, do you, what do you mean you want your hands back? Because <laughs> I, whenever like, I, I go out the street and I'm looking at all this stuff, everyone's like this. I, I mean, do I think, think that's sad. I mean, that's mm -hmm. obvious. I mean, we're all complaining about it every day what we're on our devices, but it's like, <laughs> it's like that's, I mean, what happens, how do we get rid of this and yet still be able to have the things that you're saying that's coming? Is that, or is I, it, this is, I, this is it, this is it. It's going to be, yeah. strap it on. I know I could definitely see a future where I've even seen TikTok videos where this girl has like, um, she's called like chip girl and she has a little chip like embedded into her skin that unlocks everything in her house, not just doors. Like it does a ton of things into her skin, which I personally would think is really weird, but I could definitely see a future where we're not even holding cell phones anymore. Maybe something like glasses or SD inserts or just something straight. I feel like there's a future. I don't know how far in the future, but I do see that phones are going to be like almost a nostalgic piece. Like we won't be holding that, especially because like it's not the best for our eyes, like our posture, just looking down all the time. I, I don't know if all pro our posture will improve or anything, but I could just see other technology coming in that's not a phone. Well, there's this one thing, I forget what it was, but there was a study what, what happened when people started like bending their heads out. They started growing oh. a little horn on the back of their head. Or like a little spike because it, like this. oh my god oh, that's so that interesting was, like, i heard about that like maybe eight years ago seven years ago six years ago my name is mariana kirsch and i'm a, an assistant professor in the department of mechanical science and engineering and i'm a biomechanist so by training uh, i'm a mechanical engineer and we use mechanical engineering principles to solve musculoskeletal problems in the horn study it's all over the media right now somebody published a cross-sectional study based on x-rays and split them up into ages and what they found is at the base of the skull the younger people have this extra bit of bone and in cross-section it looks like a horn it looks like spiky at the skull and so the media has picked up on this and said you know people are growing horns at the back of their heads and then the the authors of the paper in the discussion try to explain this finding by suggesting that it's a handheld device use. But doing this is not going to cause bone adaptation within a single lifetime. You have to have really, we try and get adaptation by having people jump around and we can't get adaptation. So small postural changes that are not even dynamic, so you're just kind of statically loading the tissue, is not going to do anything. So maybe it's That's crazy. But if we're going to do that, I mean, there will be I mean, human mutation. Remember when you first got your cell phone and you're like, um, for me anyways, it was like you, got, you couldn't get your fingers, probably not so much you, Madison, but like <laughs> men, definitely men. But remember when you're trying to do the phone with your one finger and we weren't there yet? And then now we can, I can pick up a phone and dial anything I want with one thumb. You know well, what I mean? Also, now, also now, you know, you can voice to text, right? Or... You can talk, you can tell Siri, hey, do this for me. And you know, you can get the you can pull up a number without when you're driving without having to, you know, with the finger thing. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, technology has a <laughs> has has, a, has exceeded uh, you know what we're used to. 
Yeah, and you grew up with that, Madison. You grew up in with technology. Like, when did you get your first cell phone? Sixth grade. <laughs> I think everything happens in sixth grade. I think sixth grade was a time where my friends had already had phones and Facebooks and stuff for years, and I was just begging my mom, so she finally let me get like not a touch screen phone, but just like a little dumb phone. And yeah, I think a little I just stupid grew up dumb phone, little dumb. Yeah, phone. it wasn't didn't do shit. <laughs> it didn't. It, it could only have like four contacts, and it was like it was like a flip phone but that was my first phone and I really do think that the horn thing is interesting you mentioned I do think that we'll see different changes and I think I've always grown up with my thumb like my mom says my brothers and I text so fast and my mom's like pretty slow and I think because I just grew up with that yeah it's a it's an interesting place to be uh mm -hmm. because like with uh I mean are people like do you see a big I mean the apps have been fucking I'm because you probably know a little inside, like what's the deal with like AI? Do you like it? I mean, I got my own thoughts about it. I want to ask yeah. them the same thing because it seems to be like a hot button right now because we've just seen like maybe a month ago the craziness that's happening and right some people like like are people using filters as that's just it now? That's because some people I don't even know if I know what they really look like anymore when I see them. So true. I really think something I try to do is. I try to look like my photos and content online. I try, I like editing. I think that's a difference between editing and like heavy filtering and AI. I definitely have mixed thoughts. I think there can be a lot of great things about AI, but ultimately it is kind of scary that it's like a very powerful source and has all the knowledge. And you could just say like, you could type out a word movie and it could just write you a whole movie or it just, it's really, it's kind of freaky. And I think that we're not used to that type of powerful technology. The fact that it's like already here is kind of interesting. It came in and swooped in really, uh, real smooth there, didn't it? Yeah. It swooped in <laughs> real smooth. Thoughts, men? About that? Uh oh, you can't hear you, men. Oh, sorry. Can you yep. Yeah, I'm trying to mute my side because I have people coming in and out of the door and it's causing a lot of noise. So it's fine. Limit it's fine. The, you can break, you have a, the computer, a mic will pick up you and not so much them. Yeah, I just don't want to cut up your sound. But um, yeah, you know, AI is definitely here to stay and uh, it's going to keep continue to be more intrusive in our lives. It's supposed to make us, you know, easier, right? Easier for us to live. But of course, we're always going to. Uh, as long as consumers keep wanting, you know, um, a, an easier way of life, then of course we're always going to have that extra help that's going to come in. So uh, it definitely makes a, a, an interesting, um, you know, concept for writers or filmmakers because you know we have a little more, um, you know, different elements to play with. Uh, you, of course, you know, horror films are great with AI, of course, you know, and mm -hmm. so there's there's all these things that always come into our lives and. Uh, we really, you know, we can't turn back, right? No, <laughs> like, it's not. Yeah. This is not yeah. the point it, it, where we turn back. This is yeah. There's it, no turning like, back. Yeah, <laughs> there's it's, no, it's, there's it's no. gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna come into our life, and we're gonna, you know, adjust and live with it. And well, I, when there is, me, when they start to make it so that it's not so clean, you know how hyper real clean it is. When they can start actually putting fingers, um, people's fingerprints on it, you know what I mean? Like really kind of muddy, you know, give it the human touch instead of this really perfected like almost like uh what they used to do um uh, you know as a graphic you know whatever um like illustrator or something like that um but like it's when they can still when they can do that when they can blur the line which is getting close really close really close um i mean what's to prevent like people from just putting in their screenplay into a computer and having it just pop out a movie yeah, it's true. It's freaky. I do think, I would hope that people always want real life actors and like real talent. And not that AI isn't talent and isn't like a skill that someone programmed, but I would hope that like, I think something actors have worried about is like, oh my God, what if in like a hundred years or X amount of years, like we don't even use actors anymore. We just do all CGI, all AI. But I would hope to think that the public would still want to see like real talents and real skills and real performers yeah it's you know this kind of goes back to what you and men were talking about a little bit earlier about or we were talking about those medias and stuff like that like um and how people are consuming their media and it's almost like ai i don't think like i like the fact that this is all in real time 
and this will be like out immediately like hopefully today or tomorrow oh, okay cool. and uh so there is this like people want especially i mean i like my comedy or my podcast or that's why i listen to them because they're done like the day before or like they are in the within the you know they're just shot like two days prior people want immediate real time things that's why the vr thing might work because people are no longer they're in real time and that seems to be where people want to be i don't know and watch yeah. things. that makes sense i think it's interesting how you say how like people want things out really fast i think that's where it gets kind of hard as an influencer and if you're not just doing influencing like myself i'm not just an influencer i'm primarily an actress and when People want content, like they want 16 videos a day, if they could. Like people want so much content. You can make the best video ever. You have like one video, like, great, that was so good. Where's the next one? Like, I think it's really hard. And when you have this expectation, you have to make so many and you want good quality, but you kind of, it comes down to it as like, how much do I post to keep my content good quality, but still posting enough that people aren't getting bored? Yeah, well, if yeah. you're entertaining yourself, you know, people will be engaged, I think, you know, because it's That's real. True. You know, it's authentic. Yeah. I think if you keep things authentic in whatever genre you play in, th that comes through, whatever media is that, that is. If it's authentic, like if I'm not engaged in this conversation right now, if the audience isn't, if I'm not engaged, then the audience isn't going to be engaged. That means I'm, yeah. I'm listening to everything you guys are fucking saying because I'm interested in what you, you guys have things that are interesting and that makes a ping pong of, you know, there's a authenticity there. There's not, yeah. there's no script. We've never, I've never met you, Madison. I know men, uh, but this is, so this is where that synergy of real sort of fun, real time experiences kind of play out and people hopefully digest that and resonate with that and maybe bring that into their own life a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit weird, but it, if the more authentic you can be, I hope in whatever people like trust themselves to start painting do photography, start their podcast, make a movie, right? You know, whatever they want to play in, you know, it's, it's, it's like nice to have this forum to play in that, to say those things, because where else do you get that? I have a question for you, Madison. Yeah. Um, so being an influencer and putting out so many videos, right? Doesn't it get tiring to continue to keep coming up with new ideas and new concepts? Because, you know, you constantly have to keep your audience, although it's, they're short videos, but, you know, every time you go and shoot something, uh, it's still a lot of work to put it together. So how do you mm -hmm. keep that fresh for your uh, audience? That's a really good question. I think that I actually really like the creative process because even though, like I said, it does kind of get a little... It gets a little confusing and sometimes a little tiring when you have to like keep making social media videos and especially myself i really i don't want to release something that i'm not proud of and so i definitely want my videos to be good quality but i also really like the creative process and i think the practice of me having to make at least one creative video a week gets my creative juices flowing like it helps me it's almost a practice like as in writing songs or writing skits i think the more you write the easier it comes and then um, I think it also is like, I'll just be doing something around my apartment. And now my brain is like, so trained to just like think of skits. Like yesterday, I'm just in my apartment. I was like, I could do a superhero skit, like just random, random ideas like that. So it is hard sometimes, especially, like I said, I want to keep the quality high, but I do like how I'm like training myself to get better at writing. It's just like a skill. I think it's really a skill. And there's times I have videos that are amazing and I'm like, oh, this is so good. And there's times I'm like, that wasn't that good. <laughs> so it's just about practice and the beauty. I mean, even though everything lasts on the internet forever, you could always delete it if you're not like proud of it or how it's performing and everything. But and you know, pros and cons, pros and cons of social media, I think. Yeah, you know, I, I guess with me, when I'm doing a film, it takes a lot, a lot of time. You can't just do a feature yeah. film, oh, right. uh, you know, in like six months even. And yeah. so, uh, <laughs> And, you know, when you have a concept and, of course, writing a script takes takes time, too. So, yeah, yeah, always trying to come up with something every day just to have something on social media. Yeah. I, I can't imagine that. But I guess, you know, for yeah. me, it's more of a, a long term. It's more like a marathon. Right. And for you, it's more like little yeah. short sprints. Agreed. And I think that it would be really hard to pump out movies, just pump out movie, movie. That's where 
they are short videos. I mean, some people do, some people, their entire life is influencing and they can make these very high production videos. And some people just like post them talking to camera, which is how you can pump out three videos a day. If you're just like, hey guys, I'm eating or hey guys, I'm doing my makeup or whatever. I think that's where it gets easier. I do like speaking on camera like that, but I really, I love, since I am an actor, I do think that I just love creating skits. I love playing a character. I love, I always, I use like Celtics, which is a script writing software and I'll just write my like scripts out of there for my social media and I also think it makes me better at acting because now I have to write the script I kind of see how it goes I have to figure out the shots um when you're making your own thing you're, you're the director the producer the actor the lighting man you're everything so it's you're learning a lot I think you're learning a lot and anyone in the entertainment industry they can benefit from making their own content no matter what part of the entertainment industry they're in what kind of Madison what kind of comedy did you grow up with like what, what were some of your influences uh film Mm -hmm. Why particularly what would you grow up the actors or yeah um my life model whole life was Hannah Montana <laughs> she was like my favorite Miley Cyrus Hannah Montana I have to say birthday is her so I grew up thinking I was a celebrity for that alone um I just loved Disney Channel I love Nickelodeon I love shows like iCarly I loved Buddy the Elf that movie definitely watched a lot of comedy growing up um I watched, what else did I watch? I watched a lot of things, but I was really a Disney girl. Loved Hannah Montana and stuff. <laughs> and so when you, what, how would you like to arc your career? Like some people like mm -hmm. Jim Carrey sort of went like a, a Tom Hanks route, you know, and people have, how would you like to model just as a template yeah. career out of the, the people that obviously maybe Hannah Montana, I'm not sure if you've seen. <laughs> But like, how would you like to see the arc? You know, when you see these different celebrities go through these different moments and, you know, Hannah Montana becoming Mighty Cyrus and all the, you know, the, the uh, uh, and she is a pro fucking prodigy. So there is that to yeah. do as well. <laughs> but like, how would you, what would you like to see happen going forward? Like with, with your guys' project and beyond? Yeah, so I can't wait to see Fables for the Witching Hour. It's my first ever feature film. I've talked to men about this. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see it. Um, so that's definitely something I'm really looking forward to is seeing my first feature film. I think as an actress, when you book your first movie, it's like a huge deal. And yeah, I really can't wait for that. And going forward, um, I have a lot of role models and actors and other entertainers I look up to, but there's no one's career besides my own self. Like, there's people I can be inspired from, but I want to have my own trajectory, whatever that looks like. If it's, I'm in SAG by next year, booking SAG films, if I'm not, in, I'm not new right now. So if I'm not in SAG for like three years, and if I do a huge film next year, and then like do a few more films, or if I don't do a film, I do a TV show. I'm kind of open to seeing what comes. I think my passions, and as I grow older, I see what I like, and I learn what I don't like, which is, I also think that's really important to know what types of things you don't like working on. And so who knows? I really just think I'm going to stay in Hollywood and we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good way. That's a pretty good, you know, you found a good partner with men there. Because yeah. He's a pretty solid <laughs> fucking guy. He seems yeah. like the ropes. He's a good, good friend. No, oh, I'm, 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 I'm excited. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to work with Madison. I think, um, you know, we can help each other. Uh, I want to build mm -hmm. her career. And I think, um, you know, starting out in social media is good. But I think moving on to films and yeah. I think there's a bigger projection there. And also mm -hmm. I think there's, a, there's a longer uh, longevity in your career as well because I don't know how long you can be in social media and just continue to keep doing those videos. I mean, it's great. I, I, you know, I think there's a lot of um, you know, uh, I, I guess talent there uh, because mm -hmm. without, you know, proper talent, you're not going to be able to put together all those um, creative projects, right? So, yeah, yeah. No, it, I think it's part of, uh, you know, the growing experience too of working mm -hmm. in Hollywood yeah. and working with different directors and different, you know, talents. Uh, and, you know, this is like a, a nice phase um, of my career because, um, you know, I want to pick up uh, somebody and really try to build a career as well. So yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited for Fable to come out. Thank I you. think it's going to be it's going to be a great project. I mean, the stories on there are really amazing, and mm -hmm. uh, with the wraparound, I think it really ties it together really well. We have a really amazing team as well that uh, is putting this together. Harris is uh, you know he's an editor, he's a cinematographer, uh, and I've edited a couple movies with him. Uh, I did the one in uh, well, the first one I directed, Hitless, was a while back. 
and it's still doing very well on uh, on the platforms. And uh, the the other movie I just uh, edited with him is um, the one I shot in Bulgaria, qualifying. So yeah, there's a you know there's we have a good team and it's solid. Uh, and I think that's important. You know, when you have a good solid team and everyone believes in each other and you stick together, and you build each other up. And you know that's that's the reason why we're all in it, right? Yeah. Hey, so like uh, you have this new movie. Oh, okay, just let everybody know. Men also directed a movie that you can check out called Clown Fear, which is really fun. And then he's he shot this movie called Qualifying in Bulgaria. Can you give us like, like I've gotten a lot of insight from you just personally, just you breaking down how things work in the system that you're working in and how you're able to actually get movies made, which is fucking amazing because it's so hard to get anything made in this town. Um, but you found it and you did it. So can you give us a quick synopsis on how the Bulgarian qualifying thing came into being in a nutshell, how the how you executed it, and now that you handed it off, because we had a conversation about that the other day, what's next for that project and how do you, you know, go, you know, you obviously started working on an anthology, but like give us a little qualifying. It's going to be coming out soon at some point. Yeah. Give us a little uh, breakdown well, on beginning, middle, and I end can, of that. I can give you a little rundown of how that whole project um, was picked up. Uh, I, I actually finished Clown Fear in 2020, let me see, 2019, the end of 20, 2019, beginning of 2020, we had a premiere uh, in February of 2020. And then right after the premiere, uh, Lionsgate, of course, picked up the movie. And uh, we had the lockdown, uh, the COVID lockdown in March. So it was like, Woo, what do we do now? You know, so I perfect say, timing. Hey, I remember yeah. the, the yeah. month and the well, week you were, and the day. That's right. You were at the, the premiere party. Yeah. And also uh, at the after party. Yeah. The I was bartender. bartending, motherfucker. Yeah, you were yeah, that was you're fun. Bartending, you bartended the after party. And of course, you know, uh, a year later, I was sitting around going, okay, you know, with this lockdown, and LA was really strict. Uh, nothing was happening at all. And um, I talked to my friend uh, who became the CEO of um, basically Millennium Media and, uh, you know, the studio in Bulgaria called uh, New Boyana. And so after talking, he's like, hey, you know, um, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm kind of waiting around till this, uh, you know, COVID ends. And he's like, well, we've been shooting films, uh, you know, since COVID hit. <laughs> We're we shooting films like crazy over here. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's getting a movie. Yeah. You get a movie. You get a movie. Yeah. You get a movie. <laughs> exactly. We haven't stopped. So um, I said, okay, well, I'd love to shoot something. And he said, well, come on over. We'll develop something. So we had this plan for me to go over there and shoot a couple films, you know, write a script, uh, all that stuff. And two weeks later, I was on a plane flying over there. And, um, you know, so in that process, I thought I was going to be there for maybe two or three months. Ended up, I was there for nine months, living in a hotel. It was kind of an interesting time, you know, just learning, uh, working with a studio, learning the ropes there. Um, yeah, uh, basically, you know, in a nutshell, that's how that got started. And then, of course, towards the end of summer, uh, around, let's see, five or six months span of living there. And, you know, I wrote a whole script with another writer. Uh, ended up having to, um, you know, figure out what we're going to do in the sense of let's shoot a movie soon. And then the CEO came up and said, hey, you want to do a volleyball movie? And I, I'm a volleyball player. So that was a perfect match. I said, sure. So we ended up shooting this movie and um, shot it. I mean, you know, it was, it was an amazing experience. Uh, the fact that I got to work with a Bulgarian uh, cast, well, mainly crew. And then the cast was mainly actors that I can pick up along the way. People were traveling there that, you know, uh, on a volleyball tour, whatever. Is the movie shot up. in Bulgarian language? No, it's, a, it's an American, it's an American English movie shot in Bulgaria, but um, half the location was supposed to be doubled for US and then the other half is for Europe. So it's kind of like an international type of a flavor type of movie. Um, sports, you know, it's a sports action movie, I call it. And um, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. I'm not sure when it's going to come out, hopefully soon, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. So just if it's not too inside baseball, which I never use that word, uh, can you, because I think it's really interesting because you handed the movie off. Yeah. If you don't want to talk about it, you don't. But like you handed the movie off and now you're waiting for the, the, uh, the people, the executives, the, the, the suits to get their yeah. hands on it. And... You don't, what happened, like, how's that feel? Well, uh, let's see. What happens is that 
I did the director's cut, you know, with with Harris here um, in the U.S. And then I sent them the director's cut. Um, I wanted to actually have final cut, you know, because all directors want to have our own, um, you know, hands in the cookie jar once everything's done to make sure that it's, you know it's completed properly. But um, you know, I wasn't given that because that's I was told that nobody. Uh, actually that works for the studio there gets director's cut unless I guess maybe if you Spielberg or you know James Cameron or someone like that then sure <laughs> but I said okay fine so I handed it off and knowing that okay now at this point what do I do in the sense that I have no control you know it's up to the suits and it's up to them to uh, finish the movie the way it's meant to be or the way they feel like it's supposed to work and then we'll see what happens so yeah it's kind of a weird feeling because not having that control is very, very hard. And um, you're basically handing your baby off and hopefully hopefully they'll do a great job. Yeah, hopefully it uh, grows up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully it's somebody. You see it, will be a little older. <laughs> right. And so will you. Uh, yeah. So do you have, are we allowed to show a trailer for that? Uh, I do have a trailer, but it, it'll be very hard to, I don't have it up, you know, so. No, but I can grab it off of Loader. Uh, let me or if see. you don't want to show it, I can show I, the Clown Fear trailer. Yeah, you can show the Clown Fear trailer. You can show the Hit List trailer. Rocking the Couch. You can You can show Fable. Yeah. Okay, oh, Fable. Yeah, of course. Ah, duh. Duh. Yeah, okay. We're, the whole we're, we're here to talk about Fables. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll, uh, so in, Mad do you want Madison to introduce it or are you? And Madison can yes. introduce it. So you you tell you tell them what uh, what's happening here in the trailer. Okay. Um, well, so this trailer is basically the trailer for Fables of the Witching Hour, Fables for the Witching Hour, and I'm in the trailer, it shows all the other segments, it shows the other actress Lola, and I think it's a great trailer. I haven't seen the film yet, but I'm really excited. Okay, so we're going to play that right now. Boom. a fast trailer what the hell it's amazing <laughs> how that happens right it's crazy well right. i look forward to it um so like did you shoot that all in la men yeah our segment we shot everything in la uh the actually we got to shoot on a boat uh on a yacht that was fun yeah. right and then we shot the other one at a green screen studio uh all shot in one day um yeah we were scripted so you know, we knew what we're doing. We got in. I'm a pretty fast director, right, Madison? I mean, you've seen, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you work with me, so I'm not. Uh, I don't. I don't sit around and try to shoot a bunch of different uh, angles and takes. Uh, I just get what I want. Uh, make you know, make sure it's it's exactly what I need, and I you know, we get out. So You're that's a how I am. Guy. Yeah, that's how I am when I uh, shoot movies too. I mean, most of the time, all my shoots are usually around you know, ten to twelve hours, and that's it. I don't, you know. I don't extend it to like 14 and 16 hours, like some of the horror uh, stories that you hear. Nice. And men, what were some of your movies growing up? Some of your influences, like creatively, like what made you want to do the things you do? <laughs> yeah, I had so many great movies that I loved growing up. I think one of them was probably Shawshank Redemption is one that I love. Um, let me see. Uh, the other one that I just talked about the other uh, just last night um, is Starship Troopers. Remember oh. that movie? Oh, that's of course, so, of course. That's so much fun to watch, and you know, fighting bugs in outer space. I worked oh, on, yeah, I I worked on uh, Space Above and Beyond, where it's uh, you know Marines in space fighting. You know, so I love sci-fi, and um, horror film is something that is kind of like a byproduct of all the things that I love. I I never really thought I would do a horror film, but 
it was such a, um, a great opportunity that I want, you know, that I was able to get into to actually get the film to Lion Kid. That's why I did it. And then now after doing it, I love it. I think, you know, a horror film has a lot of potential. If, you know, for mm -hmm. young filmmakers out there, uh, if you want to do something, uh, you know, in your first or two, uh, first or second project or third project, uh, I think this is like my fourth or fifth project. But uh, you know what? Learning that horror films, it's a great, um, you know, genre to jump into. And it doesn't have to be, and, and you know, the budgets can be very low. If, if you're creative, uh, you can do it. Yeah, there's a thing about this. Uh, I don't even almost want to say the name, but like uh, the Winnie the Pooh IP, you know, the oh. IP, the Blood and Honey. I think I heard of that. Well, the title is like Snakes in a Plane, right? It's a great title, but apparently that's it. And, you know, the, the Winnie the Pooh characters came up over on public domain. That's why they were able to do that. And a lot of, and so they, this Winnie the Pooh, uh, Blood and Honey thing, which is a great title, but apparently it's the movie's complete shit. But I think they might even got greenlit to do another one. I don't even know, but just based on, and so it's weird this, like you're saying this genre, like, I guess there's a commercial aspect to it, right? Because it's a created, it's a, a horror genre is, a, is already an IP or not specifically an IP, but it is a genre that people can do well and do cheaply. And, you know, Night of the Living Dead, the original black and white, you know, all Corman stuff, you know what I mean? You can do stuff and, and have people have a commercial viability to it. That's why that's a, a, a way, a reason, one of the reasons well, to kind of get into it, right? Yeah, it's, I think a, it's already kind of built. It's a built-in audience. Uh, the the horror fans are so dedicated to that genre that you know they love horror films. So it could be low budget, it could be terrible, it could be amazing. There's there's that fan base, and uh, the cool thing about that fan base too is that you know they're so passionate that. Uh, they brought back, I think they saved the DVD world because DVDs were going out and, and mainly everything is, you know, has become digital, right? Everyone wants to be able to uh, just go online and watch a movie, but having that physical media uh, is what brought back, you know, uh, from the horror, horror base. Uh, they love buying that digital, you know, that, that physical media and having that and being able to have, you know, the, uh, the stars or the filmmakers sign those things and they can keep it. So it's kind of a cool thing, uh, which, you know, a lot of other genres don't have, um, you know, you know, sure, comedy, who, how many people want to collect, uh, you know, DVDs that are a comedy uh, film, right? Or, <laughs> I don't know, or drama, right? A lot of times, yeah. hey, let's just uh, watch it, uh, you know, online or something. You can, you, know, you can pull it up digitally, so. But, yeah, it's a, and it's a good way for a cult classic to be started as well. Like, like, you know, like Night of Living Dead or Zombie or Dawn of the Dead, all these things still test the time, you know, they're still good to me anyway. So, I mean, you can actually, it actually can be dated, but yet still hold resonance. Like it might, it'll still be good 10 years from now if it's done great. I guess anything that's done well will happen. Yeah. Last uh, okay, what makes a good horror film? Uh, Madison, Min. Well, oh, um, it makes a good horror film. I'll let you go. I think the storyline, Madison. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think you need a good storyline. I think that's the answer to any good film because if there's not a storyline going on, it's like, what am I following, really? And I think there just has to be a clear motive at the ending or a clear plot, and there's a clear resolution. I think when films aren't that good, when they like just there's no story or they too many red herrings, they don't connect things together and stuff like that. So. I agree. I think storyline is very important. Um, also, there's certain formula uh, that goes into mm -hmm. horror films that you need to have. And, you know, of course, you know, uh, the suspense, the jump scares, um, having, um, you know, the kills is important. You can't just have a whole horror film without some kind of, you know, um, I guess, you know, somebody getting killed. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you can, but it's, you know, that's what fa those fans, the audience wants to see. And also, uh, I think, you know, going back a little bit, but, uh, you know, some uh, sex, uh, you know, uh, that's always part of um, horror. It's like, you know, uh, you have violence and sex. Uh, so all those ingredients kind of makes a good, um, uh, you know, a, a good story and a good uh, horror. Um, for instance, I just watched uh, Terrifier 2 
that thing is over the top violent. Uh, it's crazy, but it's doing really well in the theater. So, you know, there's all these ingredients that I, I think the audience, uh, the reason why they sign on to go watch this movie is that that's what they're looking for. You know, um, nobody wants to go and watch a horror film and nothing happens. So you might as well yeah. watch a drama or watch a comedy, <laughs> right? Uh, you guys nice. like going to see, uh, going to see a, an action film and there's no action. <laughs> that's why they call it a, a certain thing. Yeah, it's like, um, I want to check out that movie Barbarian. Have you guys heard of that? I don't think so. Oh, uh, there's this movie yeah. that is a kind of uh, made that's kind of tongue in cheek, but a little horror film, but it's doing really well. But um, so we have about, I'm assuming you guys probably want to get out of here pretty soon. You guys have a hard out. At, yeah, uh, Madison's got to get out in five okay, minutes. In I six think minutes. I'll one. In one yeah. minute? Okay. No, 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 at one, at one. At one. So minutes. we got, um, by, my, uh, by my schematic chart, we got a good five minutes together. Yeah. Would you, what would you guys like to wrap it up with? Um, it's the floor is yours. You can talk about anything you want. Um, and then end with like maybe how people can find you and social and mm -hmm. all that stuff. If you want people to find you. Uh, we got five minutes to kill. It's the floor is yours. You guys banter and I'll just be here and try to put, squeeze some words in. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I have a message for all actors out there is just believe in yourself. I'm and this is something- A little bit, I don't oh. know. Oh, you, am I gone? No, you're there. Oh, I am? Okay. You're still here. Okay. Are you there, man? Are you there, man? Yeah, yeah, I think I, think I was losing you a little bit. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, ahead, yeah, so a message I have for all actors, entertainers out there is create your own content, definitely. I still think that, I think there's this whole idea around acting that you are not an actor until you make it, being Selena Gomez, Miley Cyrus, until you're this huge star, but I just don't think that's true because if you are an actor, you practice your craft, you know how to go on screen, you've gotten paid for it before, you are an actress, you are an entertainer, you are an artist, even if people say, oh, well, you're not in Marvel movies yet, or you're not in this, and you're not in that, but I still think that we need to remind ourselves that just because you're not a millionaire, have all the success, all the success in the world, that doesn't mean that you're not what you are, which is an actor, entertainer, director, whatever that may be. So I just think that's an important reminder because I think it's really easy, especially with social media, to compare ourselves and just feel discouraged and feel like, oh, I don't have all these followers or I don't have this, so I must be faking it or whatever. And I think that it's important to remind ourselves that you are an actress or entertainer, director, whatever you're pursuing, even if you aren't super famous or rich yet. Do you think there's a lot of like pressure, like, in that community, I mean, it's almost like a stupid question, but it, maybe not, but it, like a lot of pressure to not just develop content, which we've already covered, but like those likes and those subscribes and stuff like that, how mental does that make people? Have you seen people get broken down by it? Have you, are of you course. People right above it? Yes, I think that... I think social media is really a powerful tool, but sometimes it can be really harmful, especially when you have a great video and let's say it gets like only a hundred views and you can see an awful video get like 6 million views. So I think it gets really hard because of course numbers are showing us how many people are liking it, how many people are watching, how many people we're reaching. And it's hard not to put that emotional attachment on numbers, but at the end of the day, I think you just have to keep posting. And if it gets views, amazing. And if it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's bad. It doesn't mean, I think people like to equate uh, numbers to quality. And I just don't think that's true. Yeah, that makes a, uh, yeah, it's a trip. Just It's a, just a different way of commerce. Like like <laughs> what you're, you're giving out free content. And, yeah. and it's costing you, you know, it's fun to create, but it's like, it's like, People like you were saying earlier, like they want that boom, 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 but they go, hold on, hold on, this is free shit. Hold on, give me a second. You know, and how do you, you know, I don't know. Uh, tell people how they can find you and we'll wrap it up and then men will wrap it up with you too. Okay, so you can find me on IMDb on Madison Willow. You can also find me on Instagram. My Instagram, same thing, Madison Willow official. I'm on TikTok, Facebook. Pretty much everything and you can find our new movie out soon um men we don't it's gonna be on amazon soon correct so yeah it's gonna drop on amazon probably in two maybe three weeks we're gonna have um, um basically 
a screening, a premier screening party and after party. So we'll, we, you know, we'll announce more of it, but uh, yeah, you can find us. We have an Instagram page, um, you know, favor oh, yeah. mm -hmm. of the witching hour. So you can find us there, follow us. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as well, Min Collins. And uh, yeah, uh, I think, you know, to wrap things up, uh, I think the, the important thing about, you know, being a filmmaker or being a, a, any talent or, you know, it's just that, you know, just keep doing the work and that you love as opposed mm -hmm. to trying to, you know, trying to make it uh, because when you put that much pressure on yourself, uh, you know, you're going to lose that passion. And as long as you have the passion and you're doing what you love, then, you know, everything else will follow. Beautiful. Well, let's call that's a we're going to hit this right in the button, I think. We're gonna get these guys out. Madison, you can go on your uh, airplane to some place fancy in the world. Yes. And you can edit your movie and do your uh, uh, downloads. And um, hey, I'm just gonna say thanks for coming on the show. That's thanks it. Thanks for having us. It was All so right. fun. Thank you very thanks much. It was nice to meet you, Madison Willow. It was great meeting you. And uh, much continued success. I look forward to seeing your film. And uh, I followed you on Instagram earlier. Oh, thank you. Yeah, one more follower. And, thank you so uh, much. <laughs> and um, Min, thank you so much for coming on. It's a Bye long time in making. Great to see you. Yeah. Um, and I'll see you in a little bit. Awesome. Okay. Thank Sounds you, guys. guys. Right. Have a great you time. Guys. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. 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 you. Thank 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 you. With Min Collins and Madison Willow. And that's gonna wrap it up. I'll talk to you guys soon. See you in the future. Brettwoods.com, Brettwoods22 on Instagram, um, Brett's with friends on the YouTubes. Subscribe, smash, likes, share. Ed Vijishtain. Bye now. Bye bye now. Friends with friends. Friends with friends. Friends with friends is never going to end. Friends with friends. Friends with friends. Friends with friends. Let's do it again. Oh oh oh, Brett. He talks to people about stuff. He's the podcast man.